Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with a little information burst. So obviously the old world has now been officially launched as of last Saturday and I know the community is so excited for it to be back. If you looked at any of the videos and saw stuff like the launch of it in Warhammer World, there was three hour queues outside, there was a huge event inside, shut off a bunch of stuff. We saw that we were getting the orcs soon with a bunch of new scopes and a bunch of returning scopes. The old, old giant has me very excited. I can't wait to add that piece to my collection. I've been after it for many, many years. And as you know, on this channel, I'm leaning heavily into the old world as it was my favorite game when it was around. And I'm very excited to delve back into it. I've already played a bunch of games. Love how the system runs. I'm currently working through my Bretonian army for an event I'm going to on the 10th of February, and I'm feverishly painting away every evening trying to get ready for that. But having said that, there are some concerns which are bothering me with the old world and its launch. And that's namely the access for people to be able to play it. It is such a bizarre thing to have this huge game launch getting all these people hyped and excited. And you go on the Games Workshop website now and click on the Old World tab and there's literally nothing for sale. Everything is sold out. Every Bretonian piece, every Tomb Kings piece, sold out. And none of the other factions have any models available for them right now. Now you can take a few bits and pieces from the Old World. You perhaps maybe pull together enough stuff to make a Warriors of Chaos Army and a Beastman Army. Uh, not a Wood Elf Army, not a High Elf Army, not an Orc and Goblin Army. It's just it's just all missing. It's not available. I was genuinely expecting to have quite a large number of kits return on the launch of the game. So that you, if you were interested in getting involved and you want to pick one of those nine starting factions, you would be able to do so. Also, we moved on to the launch itself and the uh, PDF for all the other factions that they had announced were supposed to be launched that day. I believe it was written in an article they would be available on the first day and as of right now, we have absolutely no sign of them. So if you shot up to an event with one of the armies that isn't initially supported, expecting your PDFs to just ping onto your phone at 10 o'clock so you can participate in the games, tough, not there, not available. So what do we do about it? Unfortunately, with things like this, we are gonna have to take control of it ourselves. And that's where the sponsor of today's video, Proxy War, comes in. I've worked with Proxy War now for about six months. I do a video for them once a month, showing off some of the amazing things they have available on their website. Usually it's revolved around the 40K universe, as that's such a big part of this channel, but it does have a massive fantasy section as well, with tons of stand-in miniatures that you can use in your games of the old world. I'm gonna be tackling some of those in today's video. I have a beautiful new unit of Empire handgunners and an Empire cannon, and I'm Gonna get them cleaned up, assembled, and sprayed for you guys to show you guys what the result is, see if they're worth your time, worth your effort, and worth your money. Show you a little bit more on the website of what they actually produce and sell. Obviously, 3D printing is a huge uh, element in the hobby these days, and lots of people have access to it. The fun thing about Proxy Wars is it's actually physical products. They are 3D prints from 3D printing companies, but I buy the merchant's license from them, so they are allowed to 3D print them and sell them directly to you. So when you order from them, you're getting physical prints, which have already been cleaned up, supports removed, ready to glue onto bases, get painting, and get playing. So if that excites you guys, stick around and enjoy this video. So these are the packets that I got from Proxy Wars. Two of them contain squads of uh, hang gunners. One of them contains some extra barricades to uh, basically make a nice uh, scenic base for them. And the other one contains an Imperial cannon or great cannon. And I'm gonna be basically constructing and spraying them all in today's video just to give you guys an idea of the quality of these miniatures. And then of course they will get added into my quite extensive Empire Army and get painted up to properly match my Sterling skull color scheme. So that's the yellow and green color scheme. That's what all of my Empire is currently painted as. I'm not sure whether I'm going to do more of the same or whether I'll add in some colors from some different provinces maybe. I haven't painted a Sterling scheme in, oh, probably 10 years now. So <laughs> maybe it's time to move on to a different province, some Marienburg maybe. A purple and cream scheme is uh, drawing me and uh, that might be what I do. So uh, as per usual, like I said, the models come cleaned and supports removed, but obviously there's still a little bit of work to do. So I use my trusty resin brush to scrub away any last and tiny bits of supports that may be stuck between uh, spokes of wheels or, you know, under arms or chins and those kind of bits and pieces tend to have these tiny little supports. And I, with a sharp knife, I do scrape away or cut away any extra supports or flash left on those miniatures. Then using uh, some super glue, I assemble these miniatures. So starting with the great cannon itself, 
Uh, resin is actually a really uh, easy medium to glue together as it's such a porous material that a touch of super glue, it just bleeds into all the recesses and it locks it really tight, really fast. So it is a, definitely a thumbs up for the construction side of things. It's not bad at all. Now, I don't exactly know why, because an, an Empire Cannon generally comes with three crew members. It's to represent the three wounds the thing usually has. So you remove a crew member each time it takes a wound until it dies. This particular one has five crew, which I suppose is more historically accurate. It literally has a guy that fires the cannon, a guy that aims the cannon. You've got two loaders. You've got uh, a guy with a ramrod. I think historically about five is right for manning a cannon. So perhaps if they wanted this to be used in historical settings, that's why they provided you with the uh, the five cannon crew. Yeah, I obviously got the new base, which is, I think it was 50 by 75 is the new size of cannon bases. And then obviously 25 millimeter bases were used for all of the crew. So I did glue all five of the miniatures to bases, but I just picked three of the most traditional style ones. So the guy firing, the guy holding a cannonball, and the guy covering up his ears always scream Empire Cannon to me. So that's what I went for with the uh, the spraying. The other two I left it aside. I'm not quite sure where I'll do with those miniatures just yet. But here is the assembled cannon. As you can see, it does look really nice. Lots of really nice detail running up and down the barrel. And as you can see, the multitude of crew around it really does kind of set it off and make it look really nice. Okay, now it's time to move on to the hand gunners. Now, one of the uh, the main issues with 3D printing uh, I found is that some parts can fail. Like if uh, one support fails and one piece, then you can kind of be missing this part of a model or, you know, a foot can curl up or anything like that, which can be really bad. So I ordered up two bags of 20 or two bags of 10 hand gunners. And if you look at, I've poured out the first bag and there's, I think there was 13 models. And I think there was around the same in the second bag. There's millions of heads. I think there's about 40 heads for the 20 guys that I ordered. And this is really interesting because there was indeed two two miniatures in the prints that were just a little bit off. Their foots kind of lifted off the, the print bed so they came out flat and they weren't really usable. They very kindly add in extra miniatures. So if this happens, you automatically just get a support. You don't have to deal with the whole thing of you know calling them up and saying one guy is a bit off. So I actually ended up with, I think, an extra four handgunners even after the ones that didn't really turn out. So 24 handgunners for the price of 20. One of the interesting things as well is, apart from the heads, these miniatures are already fully assembled, which makes putting them together really fast, really accessible, and really easy. They're in a variety of poses, whether it's kneeling and firing, whether it's firing, whether it's reloading. They even just do some mirror work. So for instance, this guy on, uh, on taking a knee and about to fire, there's left and right versions of that, which makes it really nice for going around the barricade system that I'm going to put on the front of their base, just to make them look a little bit cooler. Once again, all it requires is my little resin brush. Give the models a quick scrub, which does remove most of the tiny little extra supports. Other than that, I just bring in a sharp scalpel and cut away anything else that uh, shouldn't be there. And this is the thing that I mean, like, so I'm doing a tale of many gamers now with six of my friends, or five of my friends, including myself, six of us, and we're all picking a different army. So most people don't have access to the miniatures to do their army just yet. Now, thankfully, as a group, we have pulled our resources. We managed to trade some bits back and forth and give people some bits and pieces to get them started. Everyone has enough to uh, get started on the campaign, but if the, their armies don't get done by the end of that campaign, people are going to be missing out on kits and they might have to still go to secondhand markets to try and get it, which I think would be ridiculous. Here's those barricade pieces. So the first one goes across three bases. I add some super glue all along the bottom of the base until it sets fully. And then the other one, a uh, small barricade, which is just some uh, crates and some sacks of food and stuff is gonna come across two different bases. So I take the bases out of the front. I think I decided to leave a gap between them. So all I did was line up two of the bases. So they are perfectly flush. And then add super glue to the other part and glue them down on top of it. If I knew what I was using this particular tray for when I laser cut it out, then I of course could have just laser cut a base that was 25 by 50 and 25 by 75, which is would have replaced these two kind of multi-part things with full solid bases.
I did really like adding this kind of extra rank. It won't count as anything in the game. It will just count as 14 handgunners. The front rank will basically just be discarded as uh, just a nice bit of extra, just to make the, the unit seem cooler, a little bit more fun, a little bit more interesting. And because of the variety of heights of taking a knee and firing, it means the front seven guys will obviously all be firing and the back seven guys will all be loading or standing to attention or getting ready. Or even the, there's two guys having a chat, the sergeant, the marksman as they're known as in an empire unit. And as you can see, me uh, this barricade slopes down. So I have one guy standing, one guy kind of mid crouch, and then one guy kneeling. So it literally looks like they're using the cover to the best of their advantage in this particular piece, which made it all the more fun to construct this thing. That's why I'm going one at a time. And why I'm building them into the tray instead of just gluing them all individually to their bases and then putting them into the tray. Here's the guy loading. I just think he's such a beautiful sculpt. Loading some powder in and getting ready to fire off his next round. The sculpts are extremely well detailed. Like there's absolutely no complaints here for the the style of these models. And I think as a piece, this would be just absolutely stunning. If it doesn't match in perfectly with my Empire Army, perhaps I can use it as a Dog's War mercenary unit. There's you know, even a couple of new mercenary units in the Bretonian force that these guys may be suited to uh, be fielded into. I absolutely love them. So here is all 14 guys, 13 guys, 14 guys, um, put on their new trays, new tray. As you can see they're looking pretty cool. Very happy with the result. All I need to do now is glue on all the individual heads, obviously posing them all correctly, making sure they're correctly firing. Once again, just look at the detail. They're just, they're so beautiful. And all I do is add a touch of super glue into the neck area and then pick one of the awesome sculpted heads. I've already taken uh, the 14 heads out that I needed and cleaned them up, same way as I cleaned up all the other parts. With a little resin brush and a sharp knife, I was able to clean that up pretty well. Don't worry about that bit where I dropped that head. That, 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 that didn't happen. So here is a completed Empire handgunner from Proxy Wars. And I can see it in a variety of different empire schemes because it has the big Germanic, big fluffy uh, um, sleeves and stuff. It works a treat. Here is the Proxy Wars website. And like I said, every other time that I've brought you to this website as part of video, I've clicked on the sci-fi stuff and shown you what they're about. But as you can see, they have a wide variety of fantasy settings. Here is in fact their Bretonian setting. And you can see it goes from, from damsels to the Green Knight to Knights of the Realm to Peasant Bow Bowman to Knight Relic. It literally has everything you could possibly need to construct and build a Bretonian army right now. All of it is in stock, all of it is ready to ship to you right now. The only real downside to uh, 3D Sculpts is you obviously cannot participate in any official Games Workshop events or tournaments. They will not allow these prints, these armies to be fielded. But if you're playing in a tournament with your friends or in your, your local stores, 90% of the time, they're gonna be okay with that. Of course, some of them are still not that happy with 3D prints. They obviously wanna sell models from their stores, which is understandable. And I will not uh, I will not speak ill of anyone that has that kind of rule in their stores. I, I completely understand it. Here is the Empire selection of miniatures, which goes through everything from Demogriff Knights to Normal Knights to Handgunners, Halberdiers, Pistoliers. Here's the beautiful unit of Handgunners that I decided this one blew me away. There's the, the cool barricades which really did grab my attention when I first seen them. And I definitely wanted to paint this unit up. This was actually the unit that made me want to get in contact with Proxy Wars and see if they were interested in working together. Here is the Empire War Wagon. Now an incredibly difficult kit to get your hands on. Easily available from these guys. The prices are also very competitive. 16 euro for uh, 10 Beastman miniatures is quite good. After I got the miniatures sprayed up, here is what the Empire Cannon looks like. Uh, obviously I spray my models black and then gray sear. So that's the result. It shows off all that beautiful wood grain. The filigree and design up and down the cannon is stunning and it's ready to be uh, painted up now. Here's the first crew member holding his ears from the loud explosions. Obviously the poor guy breaking his back carrying the cannonball into place. And then the guy which has the lit fuse ready to make the cannon go boom. Here is the completed unit of Empire Handgunners, all 14, 13, 14 Handgunners. Sorry, it was really hard to uh, to show this model off. I've got some nice high definition photos for you in a second to show you what they actually look like. But as you can see from the downward view, the first rank is all ready to fire. The back rank is all kind of at ease, which I think really suits the design and aesthetic 
of a unit of angulars. And obviously when I put the texture paste and stuff on their bases and blend them all together, all those barricades will blend seamlessly into the bases and in with the rest of the models and it's gonna look really cool. Here's a front shot and a obviously slightly turned shot of that beautiful unit. It is a unit that I actually really, really enjoy and I cannot wait to get some paint on it. I think it will be a very enjoyable process to get that done. I'd love to know your thoughts and feelings once again on this topic. I do. I am going to waffle a little bit more after this last reveal. Uh, I hope the waffling video hasn't annoyed you guys too much. But uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. And um, yeah, I'd really appreciate it. The cannon, of course, is the last thing to show off. Another thing which I am very much looking forward to getting some paint on. Okay guys, and there we have it, a beautiful new unit of Empire handgunners assembled, ready for painting and an Empire cannon to go alongside it. Just a caveat, this was not an easy video for me to make personally. Um, the main reason for that is I'm, I'm a real believer in supporting the things that you love. If you love the old world and you want to get involved with it, you should support the creators of the old world so they have the opportunity to build a game bigger and stronger. But if at the launch of a game system you literally can't buy anything, I don't understand how they're doing themselves any favors by doing that. It's a real struggle for me. On the one hand, I want the game system to succeed, therefore you should buy from Games Workshop. But on the other hand, if people can't get models to play the game, then interest is gonna wane and the game's gonna die anyway. So it's like a damned if you do, damned if you don't style situation. So Hopefully a couple of these awesome miniatures will hold you by until your army box that you're interested gets revealed and gets launched and you can get your hands on it. I hope they get a restock. I missed everything on launch day. I waited in the queue for an hour and a half and everything was sold out. Um, so unfortunately I have no new Bretonian or Tomb Kings characters and I genuinely have no idea when they're going to return to stock. So. It's just a bizarre world that we live in. Uh, let me know what you guys thought about this video. Let me know your thoughts on the old world, how you think the launch is gonna go. What do you think Games Workshop could do differently to uh, enable us to get our hands on more miniatures? I definitely think at the bare minimum, the PDF should have been available for people to play the older armies. I don't know why they're not available uh, as of launch day. Obviously production is a whole other side of things. These guys are, it's not like they're slacking off. Every plastic machine they have is pumping 24 hours a day making miniatures and they literally can't keep up with themselves. So. The obvious solution is to buy more loads of more machines, but that's millions of euros and teams of people to put and then space to place. It's a whole other thing. So I'm not sure if that's the easy solution. Just say, make more models. I, I genuinely don't know. All right, guys, I hope this video was slightly interesting for you, slightly educational. Uh, I hope you do check out Proxy Wars. I will leave links in the description below. Huge thank you to all of my patrons. You guys are amazing. Could not do this without you. If you're interested in it, links in the description below. And uh, yeah, I'm going to continue bashing out old world content. You guys seem to be enjoying it. The old world battle report that we put out has been the most successful battle report I've ever done. So clearly you guys are hungry for more, uh, for more old world. And I definitely want to deliver that to you. This is not a Bash on Games Workshop video. I just genuinely really want the old world to survive. And um, I just want to do everything I can to make that happen. Okay, guys, enough ranting for me. I'll see you guys in the next video.